Hello everybody. In this episode, we're going to be talking about two accessories that go along with your conventional style tank water heater. Uh, those two accessories are your drip pan and your water heater stand. Now, let's talk about your drip pan first. Uh, where do you need a pan? When are you going to use a pan? Well, you're going to need a pan anywhere uh, your water heater is located that if it did start to leak, it could cause damage to your house. So if your water heater is in the attic and it would start leaking, it would start pouring through the ceiling. Uh, depending on how long it's doing it, it could cause some serious damage. Uh, if you've got your water heater in like a little utility room and it's on a wooden floor, you're going to have to protect it with a drip pan. Or uh, a lot of our builders nowadays love to build these little cubby holes kind of in the garage. And that's a wooden platform with nice sheetrock. Sometimes they put a little trim molding around it. Uh, that's wooden, it's sheetrock, you're going to have to protect it with a drip pan. Now, a drip pan will not protect you from a catastrophic fail. If this thing just ruptures and explodes, your drip pan's not going to do a whole lot of good. Uh, now, in all my years of plumbing, I have only seen one water heater fail catastrophically. But that water heater had actually been leaking for a long period of time. It was in an attic, and when it gave way, it just decided to rip down the side and dump all 50 gallons of water straight into that lady's roof. Uh, but if somebody would have been periodically paying attention to it, they could have seen the stains and the leaks on it and knew that it needed to be replaced. But uh, why do water heaters leak? Well, this is a metal steel tank inside of here. It is protected with an anode rod, but what happens over time, it rusts, it gets little pinholes in it, it starts to leak and then eventually it will just rupture and uh, pour water out everywhere. Uh, they also like to leak where there's threaded parts, at your TMP or at these nipples, or an electric water heater is going to have uh, two elements and it can leak there too. Uh, so that's what your drip pan's for. Now, uh, there is absolutely nothing in the code that says if you're on a garage floor, which most of our water heaters are in garages and it's a concrete floor under there, there is absolutely nothing in the code that says it needs to be on a pan. And that's where we get to standards. We are always going to put our water heaters in pans because inspectors are looking for a pan. They're not going to sit there and go out to their truck and go to the code book and try to look for something that's not there because if it's not required by code, it's not in the code book, and you have to thoroughly go through the code book. So we just give them the little, water, the little pan, and everybody's happy. We pass inspections and get paid. Uh -huh. Now, you've got two different kinds here. You've got this aluminum style, and you got the plastic one. The aluminum one is for your gas-fired water heaters. Uh, they get hot at the bottom. There's a flame down there and a burner. They will melt through this. So the plastic ones are for your electric water heaters and the aluminum ones are for your gas water heaters. Now there's nothing that says you can't put an electric water heater in an aluminum pan. They just don't want you putting a gas water heater in a plastic pan. Uh, so that pretty much covers your pans. You're going to use a pan anywhere a leak or a drip could cause damage to your house. So as per code, you really don't need them in a garage on a concrete floor because you're not going to hurt the concrete, but we do it anyway because homeowners and inspectors are looking for that. It's an accessory. It looks nice. The other thing is uh, we've got this pan or the stand here, 18 inch stand. Now what do you need these guys for? Well, the code says if this is in a garage, this is your gas fired tank water heater. If it's in a garage, it has to be elevated off the floor at least 18 inches in a garage. So if this is in an attic, you're not going to need a stand. Uh, if this is in some kind of little cubby hole or something like that, uh, you're not going to need a stand. Uh, the other popular place for these is they call it an aqua hut. It's a little metal building on the outside uh, of your home. You don't need to put it on a stand if it's in an aqua hut. What's the purpose of the stand? Why is that in the coat? Well, it's for combustible gases. I mean, what's in your garage? A lot of people store their lawnmowers in garages. They've got cans of gas sitting there. Yeah, they're all supposed to have lids and tops on them, but sometimes you lose the lid. Who, who knows? Uh, maybe you got some paint thinner, mineral spirits. Uh, 
any kind of flame, flammable vapors flowing around. Uh, now, in the world of gas, you pretty much got two different categories. You've got the lighter than air gases, which would be like hydrogen, but uh, nobody's fueling up their Zeppelins in their garage, so we don't see a whole lot of hydrogen floating around. Uh, you're not really worried about the lighter than air gases. What you're worried about is the fumes, those heavier than air gases. Even propane, this thing is fired off of propane. Propane is a heavier than air gas. If there was a little pinhole leak on it, what's gonna happen is those gases are gonna sink down to the bottom of the floor and they're gonna kind of float around. This conventional style water heater draws its combustion air in from the bottom. So you're gonna want that burner up here, not down here on the floor. Um, so that's what the stand is for. Now, if you've got an electric water heater in a garage, we're gonna put it on a stand, our stand, put it on a stand. Uh, there is absolutely nothing in the code book that says I have to put an electric water heater on a stand. It is perfectly acceptable for code to put a conventional style tank electric water heater right on the concrete floor in a garage. Don't need a pan, don't need a stand, but people are gonna look at that weird. We do it to our standard, which means if it's a conventional water heater, it's in a garage, it's gonna be on a stand, it's gonna be in a pan, even if that pan drain goes straight to the floor. We're still gonna do it. That's, the inspectors are looking for that. Like I said, they're not gonna go dig through their code books to prove you wrong. They're gonna fail you. That's how it goes. Homeowners, if they walk up and see that water heater sitting on the ground, they're gonna go, something's missing. Every other house that I just looked at had it on a stand, in a pan, and that's what I want. That's what I want to see. So, exceptions to the rules. It's not in the code book, but it's our standard. We're going to do it. It looks nice and pretty, um, but that's pretty much the deal. There's a lot of things that we do that are standards that we do it that way, but code doesn't have anything to do with it. So if it's in a garage, it's on a stand, it's in a pan, doesn't matter what kind of water heater it is, just make sure if it's a gas one, you're in a metal pan on a metal stand. So that's pretty much it for our pan and our stand. Uh, the other thing is, and you don't see this a whole lot, and this isn't up to the plumber, this is up to whoever's building the house or whatever, but it is in the code book. If I've got a water heater sitting out in the garage, you have got to Get one of these guys and mount it to the concrete. This is called a pipe bollard. It's got a base on it. Uh, it's a pretty simple welded together thing. Got four holes. You can bore into that concrete, put your four anchors down there, and you're pretty much gonna mount it like that. What's the purpose of the pipe bollard? It's so when you pull your car into the garage, uh, maybe it's late at night, you can't see what's going on, you're gonna tap this post first and not really do a whole lot of damage to it before you run into your water heater, knock it off that stand, knock it out of its pan, break the water line connections, break the gas connection, and then you've got water and gas shooting everywhere, and it's late at night, and you don't know what to do, you don't know how to turn it off. So, safety features, just more little safety features. Um, but that's pretty much it for this episode. I just wanted to touch on those two things, uh, three things, <laughs> but, uh, that's it. Uh, thanks a lot, guys.